Hey folks, it's Amy here from the Bureau of Tactical Imagination. And I am here today sharing my screen with you because several people have asked me to come on here and talk about how I am approaching carousels on Instagram and why, why I've started doing this. So let's start the show and tell. This is my Instagram feed. And a couple of weeks ago, I did right here, a 10 frame carousel. And this is what a carousel is. It's just multiple pictures and a post. So Instagram used to allow you to do three photos in a post, and now they let you do 10. And the thing that benefits Instagram about this is that when someone is scrolling through 10 pictures instead of three, they are keeping the viewer in the app longer. So these social media companies rely on keeping you engaged, keeping your eyeballs on their app for as long as possible. So the fact that they've changed from three to 10 photos means that this is a place on Instagram where they can capture people's attention for longer. And that means that they're gonna favor it in their algorithm. So when I saw this was happening, two thoughts went through my mind. One was where you can, where it kind of fits with your creative process and your marketing strategy, take advantage of new features because the social media channels will prioritize new features in their algorithm. Um, and two, wow, this is an opportunity to do some really fun sequential storytelling because as you can see here, as I click through these, it kind of quickly goes from image to image, but as it's sliding by, you can see that what we're actually looking at is a continuous image, kind of a collage that I have here where one links to the next. You of course don't have to do it that way, but I got really excited aesthetically, creatively at the storytelling possibilities, the visual storytelling possibility. And when I think visual storytelling, I'm not necessarily thinking in terms of a literal story, a literal word story, but rather a visual kind of world that people can enter and travel through. So this is an example of a kind of visual world of these bits of painted paper um, and colored paper and how they kind of connect to each other and relate to each other all the way through the story. Um, so from an aesthetic standpoint, I'm excited that it feels like both a slideshow and sort of animation frames and a comic or something, the sequential narrative feels exciting. And I am trying to build my Instagram following organically without using advertising. Um, although that will probably come in a couple of months. I want to see, you know, how much I can boost my, um, eyeballs on my page by making good art and taking advantage of the algorithm. So the next one I did was this one. And I don't have a huge Instagram following. I think I have 1500 people. And many of my posts these days with Instagram's kind of declining uh, <laughs> visibility for people, um, many of my posts get 20, 30 views, and these were getting up to 75 or 80 views. So I think it is true that the longer your carousels are, the better in terms of their visibility and the algorithms. Um, and also there's a kind of psychology towards helping people decide to stay with your carousel all the way through. So I've been focusing on making my imagery interesting um, definitely giving that feeling that if you keep going, you're going to keep discovering something. And, you know, to me, this as a marketer is gold because to me, it's actually not a manipulative way of treating your audience, but a really respectful way, you know, indulging and satisfying people's curiosity is a really generous and really wonderful way to engage. Um, to delight people, to surprise people. So 
this carousel took advantage of a whole lot of paper ephemera that I have, these kind of moon shapes or old watercolors that I had done just making a circle of water. This particular one was a circle of water with a little bit of ink dropped in it and then padded with a paper towel. That's actually a paper towel uh, texture. And then I do some fun typography play over the top. Now on an iPhone or on a, anything swipeable with your finger, you can slow the swipe down and really look at what's happening in between the slides. And I really love that as well. So that's another example. And I would say, yes, these have been really working well for me in terms of engagement. So 76 and 54 is a lot better than the 30s that I was getting before the 27 that I got with the still image. So those are examples of the little swipeable carousels. Um, this one, I take people through, I kind of repurposed imagery that I've been using in this YouTube channel. So you probably recognize all this imagery as the thumbnails from many of my videos, talking about my YouTube channel here. Um, as with everything on social media, it's another opportunity to repurpose things that you've done before in new ways. Here's my most recent one. Um, this is a quote, and I think this is a refreshing change from the usual kind of quote images that you see on Instagram to go ahead and bring people through a visual story. And in this visual story, I'm just playing with photographs I took around my studio of the view outside the window on a rainy day, cobbling them together in Photoshop. So you don't necessarily have to use Photoshop. You can use any program that allows you to cobble images together in whatever simple ways. I'm gonna take you over to Photoshop and let you know how I'm doing this. And I use this template in Photoshop that I will share with you. So if you look in the comments of this video, I'll give you a link where you can go and download this template if you use Photoshop. This is a Photoshop document. So let's see, I made this document to be 149.958 inches. Let's see what it looks like in pixels. So it's 1080 tall. So these squares that you see defined by these blue lines are 1080, which is a great size for Instagram. And I basically just reproduce that until I need 10. And then I came here. And let's see, I'll turn on the layer for one that I haven't published yet, green collage. I went through my collage box and photographed everything green. <laughs> and then I took favorites and I cut that and pasted them together here in the template. And I love to let some of the transitions from one to the next be a transition, as you can see here between one green and the next. And then other places, I like to let it be continuous. And I start with the imagery first, just making a kind of landscape or a mood or a story that feels compelling to me. And this one, I haven't figured out what the words will be, but I just let it sit here in the layers of the document being for an idea. So in terms of creative process, I love having a layered document like this where you can just collect ideas. Here's the one that I did that was about YouTube. And then I went in and over that and added text. You know, just simple text layers. And then I think, you know, probably each of these was its own layer and then I collapsed them to one layer. Um, this is one that I haven't published yet. And this is photographs of white paper circles and rubber bands on my desk. <laughs> and I think they look really fabulous and really interesting together. So I cobbled them together. And again, you can see that sometimes the guideline kind of creates a separation from one scene to the next and other things kind of trespass those boundaries. And what that means is if you then zoom close on one of these squares, you're going to start to get really interesting compositions in the square here with a 
sharp down the middle. And these can give you the boundary for what you're next. So that's another creative process tip that I have is you can kind of create these arbitrary situations in which you have to force your text. And that um, just gives you interesting little problems to solve from square to square and makes you do things with your typography that you wouldn't do otherwise. And there's some square like the square uh, that I probably will leave text free and the viewer can then just, you know, happen upon this jumble of rubber bands and kind of through it, which I also love, you know, kind of define people's expectations. There's squares that will be, you know, free text heavily because there's a lot of space here to play with. Um, oh, I lost one so much. Okay, let's make it smaller again. So that's how I've constructed these. Here's another um, kind of collection of images I cut and pasted in here um, that I will put text over at some point as I am inspired. Um, there are the moons that I showed you before and then the text layer for the moons looks like this. So some of my text layers are pretty, um, you know, pretty elaborate, and some of them are pretty simple. Oh, green next. It looks like I already did this one. Yes, I did do this one. I think I went overboard with the typography here. I think it's a little bit too much, actually. Um, and here's that original one with the yellow cards, and I'll just show you what it looks like without the blue guides. Looks like a strip of cards. And, you know, some lovely things happen, like this little crease with that dark shadow. That I just totally in love with. Remember that the simplest things around you can make a really beautiful backdrop for your scrollies. I'm calling these scrollies. So if you have, you know, napkins, paper towels, dishes, forks, you know, liquid in your um, dish, soapy dishwater, um, a sunspot on your floor, there are so many evocative things about everyday life that you can layer together in a scrolly and you can keep it really simple if you like I'm trying to find a simple like this so that's how I do it folks um, I was inspired to do these scrollies by Chris Doe um, his last name is spelled D-O and he runs thefuture.com and the future is spelled with an a, without an E at the end, F-U-T-U-R, thefuture.com. And he has a great YouTube channel and he um, has been doing some teaching about scrollies and using them as a way to uh, take advantage of the algorithm advantage. Um, and he would probably tell you that my process is way too laborious. He can do four or five of these in a day over the course of a day where he's doing a million other things as CEO. And he will um, do his in Keynote and he has his you know, typography on lock and all this. Um, and I think that's really worth listening to. My process is necessarily more time consuming uh, because a creative process here is really important to me. And um, it's very gratifying to me and kind of puts me in good shape for the rest of the day, <laughs> mentally and creatively. Um, so I, I really like this way. So there's, you know, different ways you can do it. Um, but it's, I think, just a really inspiring medium and really takes advantage of the potential with social media to do this kind of creating and communicating that's somewhere in between the static image and the moving image without being video. Like there's a, it almost feels like, you know, the days of pre-cinema when people were exploring all different ways to kind of make images move. This is kind of like that. There's something really old school um, and fun about it. Um, and one of my uh, inspirations here is the cranky, which is a, a puppetry um, technique where you create a long uh, story drawn out on a long paper scroll and you put them, 
you know, into uh, a little contraption with cranks on either side and you pull the scroll so that it moves across, you know, a little frame. Um, so the scrollies idea comes from looking at crankies and being super geeked out about it. So um, I hope this was inspiring to you. I hope you make some scrollies of your own. Look in the comments for info about how to pick up my template, if that would be useful to you, or make up your own way to quickly put these together. And anytime you do a scrolly and you're excited about it and you want me to see it, please tag me. I am Tactical Imagination on Instagram. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.